JavaScript at, uh, at the BBC in the research and development. Um, so today I have like the, the task of making you happy after lunch. Uh, I'm running also that uh, that event in France, which is based on actually making people better at doing their work and also making them uh, feeling better at doing their work. Uh, and like doing stuff, pictures, code, and tweets uh, on, on the internet as well. Um, Today I'm going to talk uh, with you about like readme development, driven, readme driven development. That's a topic which has been covered, I think, last week. Um, I actually, I write, write the docs. Some guy talked about it, uh, and also I discovered that by doing that stuff, uh, the guy who created like uh, GitHub, uh, Tom Preston Werner, uh, coined that term like in 2010. Uh, but he didn't go much further than just putting like four bullet points about what is readme-driven development. Uh, and I'm going to elaborate on that. But first, a couple of uh, holiday pictures. <laughs> so, yeah, really good stuff. I could have done a lightning talk just showing that. Uh, but this is Iceland, uh, like cool, like a place which is supposed to be quite nice. Uh, I traveled there, uh, I moved there, and uh, and what you can see is like beautiful landscape all the time. Like every time you do 10 kilometers, you have like different landscapes. But conditions there are quite difficult. It's very difficult to live there. You can like have like a, a snowstorm in full in September and being swallowed swallowed by two meters of snow in just one day. Uh, that's that's quite difficult. And when we were driving, at some point, a guy a guy told I asked a guy why why are Icelandic people so so friendly, why are they so so gentle with people? And I said, oh yeah, you, s you see, like, th those landscapes are, are beautiful, but the life is difficult. We have volcanoes, we have very harsh conditions. So if we don't do s stuff in a simple way, like, everything is, is different. Like, life is difficult enough not to be simple, yes. to, to make your life just easier. So I said, oh yeah, that, that, that's true. Uh, that's, that's two points. So yeah, then after that trip, obviously, when you go back from a trip, you're always a bit nostalgic about what you've done, etc. So I'm a developer, I went back to the developing world, and what I've seen was just that. Huge blob of text, how to use software. It's like, like even no, no guidelines on how to use the software. It was like, yeah, yeah just try to find out yourself. It was like reading shitload of coding. Like, man is cool, but it's like, I just want to quickly use it. I don't want to read like a lot of stuff like too simplified stuff or huge pile of specs to know how to use that program. So like, like everything when I came back was like that. It was like, it's too complicated, definitely. Um, so in 2011, when I came back, uh, so I went to a conference in Paris and a guy did a workshop about actually, uh, he made like a kind of uh, a trial about how to make someone doing something by showing Space and how to make someone doing thing by talking. And the most curious stuff was when people were uh, giving instruction, ins instruction by, by talking, the, re the result and the outcome was actually better. So I said, oh, maybe we should spend just less time writing stuff and spending more time, more time talking together, and uh, it would improve the results. So I said, okay, yeah, I should stop writing less. Uh, and I was also in the stage where I was in a startup, so I hired like four developers. And basically, when you're in a startup, you want to go fast, fast enough, but not fast, not too much as well. So we we trust each other, and we had like the condition of remote working. So because you're in remote working, talking is not just enough. Because if you are just relying on talking, you're excluding people who are not in the same place as you. So you still need to write stuff. Um, and what we wanted, so was just like simplicity. We wanted to, like, not spending time writing things to do, but doing them and then writing afterwards. And we prefer to spend like more time at talking at the coffee machine to fix the problems. Uh, and we also had like the luck of choosing a tool, so we could choose like simple stuff. And GitHub was obviously a choice for that because for that for us it was oh I can do uh, issues, I can do code, I can do documentation, like I can do we can do everything in one place. We don't have to maintain it. We don't have to spend time on stuff we don't want to do. 
And uh, yeah, and we were using Node at that time already. So it helped us, it, it, it helped a lot to, to make things simpler because Node enforces like simplicity like all the time. And so we, at the, at the beginning, we had like one project, it started to grow to two, to three, to four, and then to five. The small stuff was not already small enough. We started running in a couple of questions like, oh yeah, but how, how do you do that? How do you install that? How do you, I don't remember that exactly well. So it's like, yeah, we, we started actually to, to struggle with, with those things. We, we realized that even by wanting to be simple, uh, we made kind of complex things anyway. So yeah, we had to find a better way to document what we were doing. So which, in the end, when you think about it, it's like, yeah, we spend definitely like a lot of time to write code. We spend a lot of time thinking about things we could change the world. We think about it, about how to make our life like better. We, we also like want to have pleasure at doing our work. Like that's, that's kind of something which is, uh, maybe new, it's like we don't just want to work, we also want to be happy at doing our work, and we care about that. Um, and we also want to have the satisfaction, so it's not just like, for example, for developers, even like for technical writers, it's not just about like writing a technical documentation, it's also being satisfied at that, you want to, to see people happy uh, to use what you've done, the, the end result of your, of your work. And um, yeah, and it's, it's the case even if it's for like the new project which is going to revolutionize the world. Um, so yeah, it's basically trying to yeah, forget that slide. So let's go back to the readme. Um, so finally, the readme, we, we've chosen that approach because that was like an evidence because GitHub made that, made that file, the first file displayed ever on the, on the website. It was just like obvious, okay. If we had to write documentation, why not like writing on that page? Because if you go on the package we've just built, like that's the first thing you see. Okay, let's do that. What we liked also in that was, obviously, it was a simple markup. Like we, we could do that with like the language we want. Like we could use Markdown, we could use like REST, we could use uh, ASCII doc. So basically, you can use the the, the format you're the most uh, comfortable with, which is like you have no obligation. You you decide. And it's still simple. You don't have to learn a lot of stuff. It's not like XML. It's not like learning XSLT or very complex things. Um, it's also fast. It's also fast to learn if you don't know it. It's fast to read because you're not, it's not cumbersome. And it's fast uh, to write because you don't have to spend a lot of time doing a lot of things which are useless. You have just to make emphasis. Um, it's pervasive as well. You not, like the, the, the format you decide is not like the, the end format. You can transform that very easily into something else. PDF, HTML, or you need to build like a paper documentation for people who are away. Yeah, just print the PDF and that's fine. It's not blocking at any point, so it's cool. And what was also interesting is that you, you could have like all, everything important information inside that. It's like, what is that tool? If you don't answer the, the to the question of what it's doing in like in a readme, basically like nobody's going to use it because they can't understand by just digging into thousands of lines of code. Um, so that's <laughs> all the information you need to, to put inside. Um, so you also have like the freedom to consume and distribute. Like people just talk later about like the, the tool they like to use to write Maldo. You if you want to write Maldo, you can write that in AI Writer. You have like. Uh, uh, online HTML editors, markdown editors, you, you have the freedom to also use the tool to contribute, you have the, the freedom to use the, the tool you want to consume them with. Uh, so you're not, at any point, you're not like locked into something. And what is also a good benefit, it's like you don't have a software and then when you want to use the software, you have to go on another website, you have the documentation alongside your code and its version to the, uh, its version as well, so if you, have, if you are using two different uh, versions of the same code. You have the updated documentation for every version of your code. You don't have to go on the website, both complicated stuff, always simple. And it should contain examples as well. As well. It's like, it's cool to, to provide an API, to explain a lot of technical stuff, but if you provide examples, you just are giving context to how to use it. What are the real world example? What, as a developer, I would like how I would like to use it as a developer, how as a technical writer I can help people to use that tool that I have not made, but people from my team have made. So how, 
how can we, how can we do that? Examples make stuff clear because the words you use in the documentation is not are not necessarily the words people understand. Um, and the limits are very shallow. Uh, I've intentionally made uh, like that uh, huge picture of, of a, a readme. Um, why? Because just by looking at the outline, you can actually feel if it's difficult. Like here on this one, I, it, it's a simple one. You can see just by the shape of the text, you can you can you can clearly feel if it's something complicated, or simple, or uh, have a lot of options or not. And just with that, you can know, like in a glance, your brain is processing that very fast. You, you will know that that is going to take you a lot of time to use. It will take you a lot of time to understand. Or maybe if it's problematic, or maybe if you find a bug, it's going to be also more difficult to, to contribute to. Uh, so that's, that's also the, the kind of indication it, it can give to people. Um, and also the benefit of that, and because like, we are here to discuss about documentation, about content, like what's inside my code, what's inside my, my product. Right? It's content first. It's you are writing something which is not, uh, I mean, uh, the, the way you write it, it's, it's not important. You focus on what you are writing, uh, basically the sentence, the world, and how people should read it. So yeah, that give away technical stuff. And we pushed that for further by driving projects with that. So what I told before is something you can apply to to existing project. You can use that to improve documentation. But then, what if you want? to start, for example, a, a new project. Yeah, let's start a new project. What are you starting with? Writing code directly? Um, so that's something I, I've tried, and basically it's, you could start write a new project just by writing readme. Like, just forget about the code, just forget about everything. Write the readme first, apply the same rules. The title, the description, what it does, uh, how do you install it, how do you do things. And we, you could basically start a project with that. Last time I had like an idea about doing something new in the company, and I just like wrote the API into the into the readme, and I stopped that, and I done that like three months ago. And because people wanted to do something similar, I just gave them the readme, and they said, "Oh, thank you! It just saved for us. It saved them like one day of work because I already thought about something, and that you can already share that. You can share the intention." Uh, and it, it makes stuff also very clear uh, when you say, but like developers are very, they like doing cool stuff, but they also forget that writing code is actually not that primary job. Like a lot of people said, yeah, developers are here to code, but uh, no, developers are here actually to communicate on what they do. And by writing the readme first, what you do is actually saying, this is what am I going to do? Like, do you think that the way I'm shaping my code is something, is, is going to make something like usable? So if you write the readme first, if you describe the API and show that to people, they are going to tell you, oh no, you have, you've missed that point, or I'm not sure about like the output of, of that command line, I'm not sure about like the expectation of that method, so yeah. So you can actually start to collect feedbacks first. You, you write your readme, you collect feedbacks, and then you can start coding. And the time to code is going to be uh, longer, but the time to ship your code is might, might be actually faster because you are you are already clearing all the complication first, like far ahead in time, uh, which in the end is better because you end up with a more qualitative tool. Um, and finally, what is cool because you can start not just by writing tests, but you, you can also by showing examples and by showing how how people are going to use it. You are also starting to shape and designing your code this way, which means that you don't have to think about what you are going to write in that. I don't care about the code behind that stuff. What, what's interesting to know is what is the intention of your code, how, how my, the business of my code is going to be organized, and how people are going to use it, and does it make sense? And if we go back to the, 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 that, that point, it's like, what people are going to say about me is going are, are all the stuff which are going to be make my code better because it's going to be improved. Um, so that's what I said. And so if you take that, it's like it would be all the same thing as sketching. You are by writing the readme, you are sketching what you are doing. You are just giving a rough idea about what's going to be produced, and that's the cheapest way to do. That's the fastest way to do, and that's basically the, the, the 
the, the way which is going to make iteration faster because you can make more iterations you can do a ping pong on features you can do a ping pong on, uh, on feedbacks much more easily that if you if you write a lot of code and if you have to make mod modifications you have to rewrite the test you have to rewrite the documentation you have to redo everything and uh, that's just like more complicated and the development parts um, that development part is actually during the life cycle of a project. Um, that's something I actually have, like I started doing that from, from everything. So if we go back from what we've done, we've written stuff in the readme. We have written like examples. We have written APIs. We have written uh, like everything which should be inside. And you can clearly go from that and write your texts, which means that you can go directly. You can do like TDD. You can do BDD. You can do whatever you want. But just because you've written everything in your in your readme. You can go to your code with much more confidence because you don't have to think about all the edge case. They are already here. You have already written your edge case. And because you already have written them, you can write the tests also faster. And you can go back to your, like, you can go back to your readme much more efficiently. You can make like other tweaks, everything like that. And that's also a good way to detect like code complexity. Uh, when you have like a, a complex, uh, well, that's, when you, have a, when you have a complex code, when you start to, when you start to have like a readme which becomes more complicated, um, it also means that at some point you may be trained to do too much within the same project. So that's time to split. In that project, they were doing like kind of library to help people building TV applications, and they have just uh, stuffed something like a, a Node.js code inside that. And when I arrived and wanted to use it, it's like, What's that stuff really doing? Because we have like PHP code, uh, JavaScript code for the back end, for the front end, but I don't really understand how all that is working, what, what is monetary and what I should use. And um, yeah, basically I removed that from that code, just made like another modules, written test, made another readme upon that, so I split the complexity and the previous uh, project was doing only one thing that new project was with one, only one thing, and I even split the configuration and said, okay, this is even another project. Uh, so as people can use only the configuration, and people can use only the Node.js part, and people can use only the browser part. And, um, and yeah, even for them, it was, when I showed that to them, they said, oh yeah, that's deadly obvious. We, sh we should have done that like earlier. But because like, they wanted to go fast, they just put everything stuffed that and say, that's cool, that's inside the code. That's going to work for everyone. And even better, you can do that with pull requests. Um, uh, I've done like a, like a huge mistake. I was like very confident on a project, and I said, "Yeah, let's 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 rewrite everything. Let's push that, and let's because it's better. It will have like a documentation. It will have tests. It will have like plenty of stuff." I proposed that, and the guy said no. Uh, so I spent like basically two weeks on that, and they just dropped it. Uh, so now I'm also using that for. Um, for, for issues, it's like I'm going to. Pro you have people who want to interact to, with your project. You have like a good. You have a good readme. You have, you have you have contributors. So instead of writing the code first, tell the like the the code owners what you want to do. Explain them what is your really your intention and explain them what is the API you are going to provide to the to to, to your code. And they will say, oh, uh, but that, that part is not good, or have you, have you thought about this edge case, and things like that. We, we just go back to the same life cycle. We just go back to the same thing. And that way, when you get the approval on how to do the stuff, you're already more confident, because the, the, the work you're going to produce has like, much more chance to be accepted, because you already have a, a go from the beginning. And that we will, you will just have to discuss about the implementation and like, a tiny bit, not, not, not in the end. And uh, people are going to tell you, yeah, that's good. What you, the implementation of your initial idea is good. Let's merge it. Let's review it. Let's change stuff. And sometimes uh, you will eventually even have people uh, doing the work you, you've, you've proposed. Because during the night, the guy was so excited about the idea that when you wake up, he said, oh, yeah, it was too cool. I did it. Because the way you eventually explained it was so clear. They could do the job for you. So that was quite cool. Um, and if we go back also to more technical stuff, you can use a, that you have like code linters for readme, which means that if you write code into your readme or whatever, 
it's not supposed to run everywhere, but you have Inter, which are going to tell you you have syntax error, uh, like you have problems in the code, which is lying in the readme and which are not running live. And you can make trees of readmes because basically when you are doing a lot of small modules, a lot of small projects, then the program is navigating into all that and you can just aggregate and make like a one unique endpoint for documentation if you want to give it to people and how to navigate into that. Um, which makes again, by breaking complexity, you are recreating a new complexity, but then you can simplify it by merging everything together. Um, yeah, so just to wrap up stuff, um, what the benefit of that is you have like a single entry point. It's like people have what you provide into the same in the same place. You share your vision with people. You are you are going to say to people what where you are going, what you want, and what they are actually being able to connect with that. Uh, it's very explicit. Uh, everything which is not inside is something they shouldn't care about. Uh, it makes also a dialogue, a dialogue much more easier because everyone is speaking the same language. Everyone is speaking about the, the same stuff. They are speaking about what inside you've provided. And it's also yeah, it's solving the problem of not writing the code as fast as possible, but making sure you have like the best quality code sooner uh, merged in the, in the master block, for example, if you are using it. And in the end, that's also what we wanted from the beginning. We wanted something simple, simple to document, so simple to document, si simple to use, simple to share, simple to maintain. And uh, yeah, that's all what we want to, like simplicity. So that's it. I don't know if we have time for questions or or question. Yeah, later. Any questions, sir? The bus. <laughs> so just kind of seeing what you're talking about with the usefulness for communication, it seems like this would be a really interesting way for tech writers to communicate with developers, where the tech writers have the documentation and they write you know, a documentation page for a new feature that they want to exist. And it seems like it would be a really fascinating way to kind of communicate between the two. It's like, I'm going to write the documentation for the feature I want you to build. Yeah. And like, I'm going to communicate this to you in this way. And I think it would be, like, I think that's a, a neat concept. Yeah, definitely. And that, that's something you can do, for example, in an issue on, on GitHub, because they, they would say, OK, like you have a technical writer, and you, you express, like, a, you create an issue with that. And um, the developer could say, oh, yeah, uh, if I understood what your issue, this is the code I'm going to write to solve that problem. Is everyone agreeing on that? And then you can start implementing on it. And that make the stuff. Okay, anyone else? Supposing you're writing code that's only consumed internally. Um, and the product team is the one who specifies what's supposed to be happening in the code, the form it's supposed to take, what the end result is going to look like. Would then the product team write the readme, or would they just write the text spec that then gets translated into the readme? Actually, that could be interesting for them to write the readme, or write something which we end up as being the readme, even for internal code. Actually, uh, uh, a guy, when I've done that, that talk in, in, in French, the guy said, oh yeah, but that we should do that also internally because uh, the product manager knows what we are doing as well. And because what's inside the readme is not just technical stuff, uh, you can, because you, you have the description, you have what it's doing, and you can illustrate it with the animation. GIFs are excellent for that. You can put GIFs and show it. It's, uh, if, it's, if it's a widget, for example, you can show in a GIF how it's working when people are clicking. So everything is just dead obvious. And, um, so, yeah, short answer, yes. Uh, but they, they, I mean, they, they, they shouldn't write like, uh, it shouldn't be complicated in the end. If it's complicated, it's also more complicated to understand, and then it's more complicated to, to write, even as a software. Uh, like, the more words you write, is not making the, the code better quality of code. So then, would this replace the tech spec? Yeah, I would definitely go this way and uh, spend more time talking with developers about what they do and let the developers writing that. Um, but yeah, I, I'm not sure I answered the question for that.
close enough we can talk later. Yeah, no, but the thing is, um, the emphasis on that is they should say what they want and they should talk together about how they want that to work. And because the product managers express what they want, making sure that developers agree on what uh, product managers want and vice versa by talking would get you to better results than producing specs, giving the specs to developers and waiting for developers to implement that specs and say, oh no, it's not working the way I want it. Because none of them has a, have a clear idea about what they really want. Um, so yeah, they should start writing something, but they should spend time talking about it more than writing stuff, definitely. It's difficult. Uh, just a short remark on the thing you were uh, saying before, how you were starting to have um, difficulty. Okay, how do I install this? Um, a great idea, um, if you can control it, is we have no s snowflake deployments. Like everything is standardized, and this is the way we do it, and it's already automated. So uh, there is no question about how to install a piece of software in in uh, in your server infrastructure, be a AWS or whatever, you know. Um, yeah, but I don't know if how Snowflake is simple. To uh, Snowflake means like this is special. Okay, there is no <laughs> special case. Everything is installed in the same way. So that's basically. It. Does it work in reality? Um, <laughs> I wish. Yeah, because like I, the, I'm, I'm trying hard. <laughs> yeah, ideal case never exists, and we always think about we always put a lot of effort into trying to make the stuff working all the time. We should spend more time trying to accept the failure of, of that of stuff not working the way we expect, and including the failure in the in the way it works. But uh, and, yeah, maybe but. For me, that just using another tool to make all the stuff work in the same way is, doesn't. Well, yeah, we can talk about that later. What is the limit uh, with simplicity? Because uh, I write uh, code and uh, libraries, but uh, when I when I have a library with uh, ten functions, um, I dislike having. It's uh, in a single file, or maybe it's a big library, so I cannot split it in many projects. Yeah. So, how do you uh, manage? Uh, how do you keep the, the file uh, so it is simple when your library is uh, quite big? Ask your brain. Uh, <laughs> it's like no, not really. It's like um, that's why I, I put that shallow limits. Because like every project has like kind of different context, every project has like different history, and you can't say you need you can't go further than 300 lines in your readme. That's that's a stupid widget. So it's more does it looks like is it understandable? Is it like nice enough to read? Is it short enough to, to get inside? If you want to if you have 10, 10 functions and want to give people like just a sneak peek a sneak peek with them uh, about them. That's cool, use that. If you want to go more in depth, put that elsewhere. You make a link from the readme if you want to know more about that part. Read more about on that page. And link that to a, a, a doc folder and put more uh, intensive documentation about every of those points if, they, if, it's, if it's relevant enough. Uh, but you decide actually the complexity you are, you are providing to your users. And we, yeah, tread, like trust of guts, it's like, is it, is it fine enough? If you, if you have a doubt about that, it's maybe because you, you should make something simpler. If you if you are the doubt it's already too late, you should yeah, it's too late. No, it's not too late. You could you could make it simpler. It's okay. already too complex. In fact I, I actually do it because I limit myself to one example in the readme and uh, links add links to the documentation. Yeah. But so it depends on the complexity of the project. Sometimes I don't believe that one example is enough, except if it's something which is dead simple and that the rest is just configuration. So it depends on the project. But I would put more one example per function just to make people, it's, it's faster to write an example than to write, to, than to read the, the API doc. An example is just straightforward. You can copy paste it and people have got that. You don't have to 
contact with the symbols in Britain. They just can play into that. Thanks. Last question? Yeah, I'll take one more. Yeah. Um, a quick comment that ties in with this approach. I find a really great way of getting feedback from developers is to write incorrect documentation intentionally <laughs> and send it back and say, they, check this. Yeah, they fix it, which is great. Uh, like I make mistakes, they do it all the time. And they say, oh yeah, you just made a mistake in that, in that, in that world. And, that, that's cool. and because you let people go in, easy, in an easy way your code, they don't blame you because everything is obvious. And because it's obvious, they are not uh, frustrated about how to use it. They can just say, oh yeah, I tried, I tried to click on that link, it didn't work. This is the fix. Right. All right, so we're going to move on to the next video here, but um, let's